Hello and welcome to New Planet School. In this video I'm going to continue describing Mac Grapher and in this particular video I'm going to describe how to make animations of your graphs. So instead of having static graphs the idea is to put them in motion. For example here's a sine wave where I vary the frequency of the sine wave and I get a nice animation and I can see how sine changes as I vary that parameter. And in Mac Grapher, this also works in 3D, so you can take some function like this one and put it into motion. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so how does that work? The way it works is there's about five steps to be able to animate your, your curve. So let me just run through them really quickly, and then I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing is you're going to define your function. And so you're going to have some function like you normally do, say y equals x squared and you want to vary something about that. So decide what it is that you want to vary. Um, and then add that new variable in the right spot. So retype your function with your parameter. Let's say I call my parameter ax squared. And that's the thing I want to vary. And I type that in, and it won't work. So you'll get kind of an error, but that's okay. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is give the new variable a value. So you'll say a equals uh, minus one. It doesn't matter. Give it give it any value. And again, Matt Graffer won't really know what you're trying to do yet until you finally click on that parameter and tell it to animate it. And you'll do that by going into the equation menu and clicking on animate parameter right down here. So that's the basic idea. So let's see how that works. Okay. So let me start off by just talking about parameters, because maybe not everybody knows how to do that. So let me just define a function here. This happens to be a Bessel function. I introduce a parameter a, and I can give it several values, 0.5, 1, and 2. And MacGrapher will plot it for those three values. So that's just how you put a parameter in. You can also put the initial value, the next value, and three dots, or an ellipsis, and it'll do the whole range starting at the first value and the second value. You can look at the values it's using by clicking over here and can change the values to, to do whatever you want. That is how Matt Grapher uses parameters normally. It, it, you can just basically specify a range. So here's a range. The other thing that um, it allows for in this mode is two parameters. So let's say I make a B here I can set another set of parameters here, 0 and 1, and I get two families of curves. So I get two sets of Bessel functions with the, the parameter A varying over a wide range. And you can click on the down arrow. You can see these are the different B and A combinations that it's using. So that's how just to do parameters. But what we want to do is vary them so we're not going to use this curly brace um, notation here, but we are going to be using this notation as I mentioned. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, so now we're going to let the parameters vary. So let's enter our function and here put in whatever function you want. Uh, let me use the Bessel function again just because I was just showing that. Okay, there we go. There's the Bessel function and I'll introduce a parameter A in the same spot, but now I'm not going to give it a value yet. I'm going to go down here and say new equation and I'm going to give a some value. I'm going to give it one. It doesn't matter. Anything you want. Now go under equation, animate parameter, a new bar will come up and you simply press play and there is your animated graph. And if you want to customize it, click over here on the right. You can change the minimum value. Let's start a at zero and let's make A go up to, say, 16 with 20 steps. You can make it loop or not loop. And then press play again. And now it uses the range of A values that you specified there. Now, you can also click over here to the right where it looks like film. It says create movie here. Click on that. It takes a second and a movie pops up. And Matt Graffer has made a movie of your animation. Here it is, just to prove it to you. And you simply go up into the file menu, type save, and you can save that and use it anywhere you want for 
a, a, a presentation, teaching, whatever it is that you want. So very, very powerful. Okay. You can also control the output a little bit more by, instead of doing animate parameter, you can go under create animation and you get this new window to pop up and now I can control the duration of the movie, the number of frames of the movie, the size of the movie, which parameter I want to animate here I only have one, I can change the initial value and I can do all this separately from from what I was doing before because this is generating specifically to generate a movie. Create animation takes a few seconds, the animation pops up and there it is prove it to you. There it is. I'll play the movie. Play it again. And as usual, you can go up and in the file menu and you can save that as you wish. So very easy to animate a function and be able to export it. Not surprising in Matt Graffert, it works in other coordinate systems, so ev everything is basically the same. You type an equation in, and in this case I'm using r and theta instead of x and y. Add a parameter here, same thing. Give it some value, go under equation, animate parameter, press play. Everything's the same, you can set the minimum and maximum values. Nothing changes, just a different coordinate system. Maybe it's a little bit more interesting, but it's just another coordinate system. Okay, now let's try this in 3D. So here I have a function, z equals all this stuff. And I'm going to add a parameter out here in front just to keep it simple. Define what that parameter is. I'm going to make it minus 9 just because it doesn't matter. And then I go under equation again really nothing changes, press the play button and now I have an animated 3D surface. Same thing, I can set the minimum and maximum values, can set the speed, That notice I have this set on fast. If I click on the function I can then go and customize it as normal. Let me set the resolution to be a little bit higher, it looks a little bit grainy, I make it a little bit slow. Now I gotta click back on the parameter. Now go back and animate that parameter and it should all work just fine. Now notice it's fairly slow. It takes a while to create each image, but once it's created, it stores it in memory and then it's, it's a lot faster. So the first time through it's a little bit slower and a little bit clunky, but then it gets to be fairly smooth. All right, so be creative. Here's an example that I made up myself. I call it the kissing goldfish, and it's kind of neat because it uses um, the animation feature um, within what's called an implicit function in 3D, and the particular function that I use is this, and this happens to make something that looks like kissing goldfish. All right, there you go. So try try different things, play around with it. There's so much you can do with this. And don't forget to look in the examples. If you go up into the examples menu, there's something called variable parameter, and it's the example that is for animations. And so you can go in and play around with that and see what other things you can do with this um, great capability in Mac Graffer. And so with that, uh, thanks for being here. We'll see you back here at New Planet School very soon.